The Dogs, in association with the Greyhound Board of Great Britain. Well, cheers and welcome to the complete angler uh, Marlow and Bucks for what is one of the best days for me in the Greyhound calendar. It's the traditional Greyhound Derby lunch back by William Hill and today we'll be chatting to the connections of the six finalists gunning for glory in the greatest Greyhound race in the world. His fears are falling, some four lengths clear into the third bend, kind of ready staying on, after these comes Wise Thorn, they come round the final bend, it's Charlie Lister and fears are falling with a length lead. Last year's breathtaking win for Kinda Ready really did raise the roof for Mark Wallace and his team. And Mark is back again with a finalist, the improving, albeit inexperienced, Adagio. Last year, Mark, Kinda Ready 25 to 1. That was easy. You got a 50 to 1 chance this year. Yeah, that makes it interesting, don't it? Um, as I said, you know, lightning can strike twice, and who knows, maybe it might strike again this Saturday. Never in my wildest dreams did I expect to be here. No, I didn't. The fine line between qualification and elimination was never better illustrated than in Saturday's semi-finals. Adagio just edging the unfortunate heading on Ennis. But no one could begrudge the Wallace Camp another finalist after Antipo's favourite Eye on the Storm's career was ended in the first round. Adagio was considered one of the lesser lights in the original entry from Imperial Kennels but has come of age in the Classic. He fully deserves his place in the final, which always looked possible from this moment when he finished fast to win in the first round. You know, he does possess a little bit more early than people think, you know, and I think if we could get up there, you know, within reason to any of the leaders, then I, I, I think his strength down the back straight and coming home may well pay again, you know. Could have another finish like kind of ready and fierce funny last year. Well, I don't think that'll do Errol any good in the commentary box. He got uh, a bit excited last year, didn't he? But uh, tell us about the owner. He's uh, he's been in the game a long time, hasn't he? Yes, Dix and and Dan, they've they've they've, they've um, staunch Walthamstow owners um, right back in the days that uh, even they wouldn't care to remember sometimes. But uh, yeah, fabulous. They've been in the kennel six or seven years. Had a few dogs with us, and uh, I couldn't think of more deserving owners to to get a Derby finalist and maybe a Derby winner. I try and keep myself under control, <laughs> keep running to the betting office and have another little bet. <laughs> but um, we, you know, we are really excited. We've got the whole family behind us coming to the uh, dinner on, and the, the, the final on Saturday night. So we're just very, very hopeful and uh, the, the sun will shine on us and we'll do the business. <laughs> Big Mac did the business for Adagio in the draw, giving the youngest runner in the race the striped jacket. And perhaps sensing another big price Mark Wallace winner, punters have been quick out of the blocks to take the 50 to 1 offered by the sponsors following the draw. Adagio is now 33 to 1, drawn on the outside of the Dolores Ruth favourite, Tumaline Jack. Or back to the Derby luncheon at the sumptuous Complete Angler Hotel in Marlow. And the question on everyone's lips was who would lift this outstanding trophy? and bagged the £75,000 winner's cheque. A man who has lifted the prize on many occasions is Charlie Lister, and yet again he's represented in the final. Bandicoot Topoki, who reached the quarter-finals last year, won the Midland Puppy Derby in Steel City Cup, has been laid out for the derby. Charlie had a big team going into this year's derby. You've got one through to the final. Bandicoot Topoki, was that one you expected? Uh, well, I expected to get to a fee for really, but uh, it don't always work that way, does it? I mean, um, uh, I expected yeah, with Jamie going a long way, and uh, I did fancy Fierce Phonic going a long way, but uh, I did I did fancy uh, to Polky. I thought he would, he'd be a better dog this year, and um, I think he's proved that he's a bit better dog this year than he were last year. Well, Bandicoot Topoki proved he has lightning speed when setting new figures at Wimbledon in the first round heats of the derby and his price contracted after that run to become one of the co-favourites for this year's competition. Well, Bandicoot Topoki is owned by Ray White who's tasted derby success in the past with dual derby winner Rapid Ranger and has been a very loyal owner to Charlie Lister. He's a good owner and he kind of leaves it to me and 
he's been with me a long while and uh, no, it, it'd be nice for him, yeah. Bandicoot Topoki runs from trap three in the final and will need to bang out of the boxes in his best style as he attempts to get past Lyrene Mover by the bend. I think any dog in the final has got the, what's going to win it anyhow, they'll want, they'll want to get away and get a run because uh, there's six decent dogs in there and, um, you know, you just hope that things go right and they get a clear run. Mind you, he's one of the few dogs in the race that could come from behind a couple. Yeah, he is. He's a dog that can come from behind, but uh, most of the time he's kind of, you know, he's always kind of been in front on the back straight. But uh, he entered the two easy, easiest runs this last couple of runs, but uh, no, he's, he's, he's really surprised me. He's been a really strong dog. But both Bandicoot Topoki and Adagio had to play second and third fiddle to a rampant Tumaline Jack in Saturday's semis. Dolores Roost Dog ran from six. And there they go, racing up towards the first bend, and Timberline Jack is away. Leads up with Romeo Reason on the inside, in between the Bandicoot to Bogey. And, Ro and uh, I can tell you that Romeo Reason goes on from Timberline Jack, and then comes three-headed on Ellis. Bandicoot to Bogey's under pressure, as it comes down towards the second last bend. His six on the outside, Timberline Jack going past Romeo Reason. Then comes headed on Ellis, and then after this comes Bandicoot to Bogey. They come around the final bend, Timberline Jack, the track broke out older, has no worry qualifying. Bandicoot to Bogey, what a great run! Second, tight for third between trap four, Adagio, and trap three, headed on Ellis. A searing burst of all-round speed saw Tumaline Jack outgun his semi-final rivals, but only after a battle to the turn with Bandicoot Topoki and then Romeo Reason. But Dolores Roos champion came through it, has made the derby final and now lines up the shortest price favourite since Westmead Hawk five years ago. Victory on Saturday would also emulate Shan the Slippy's unbeaten run through the 1996 derby. He too was trained by Dolores Ruth, who rates the dog on a par with her previous Wimbledon champion. Yeah, his style of running would be very similar. He has a great burst of pace, fantastic bend runner, and he can really kick on up the home straight, so they're very, very similar. Temperament-wise as well, so um, yeah, definitely very alike. Now Jack's runs in the competition so far, but those of us who stayed for the last heat in the first round, it poured with rain, but he really impressed. It was like running on the beach, really. Uh, when I looked at it when I got home and saw really how bad it was, you realised what a performance it was. And he'd never been around the track as well, so that made it even more special. Now you come into the competition as a one-time hurdler, dog with maybe a cloud over him from his previous existence, but he's shown none of that, has he? Now there were questions there, but he's answered them all. Um, I only acquired the dog, you know, in his second season, and um, since he's joined me, I think he has just kind of um, improved a bit. All right, so um, yeah, questions there, but uh, he's definitely he's lived up to all the answers. Plenty of discussions about his runs before he joined you, and whether he was disqualified or not. Have you got anything to add to that conversation? No, not really. Um, when I got the dog. The dog had to do a satisfactory trial before he ran again. There was a doubt there, and it's for everybody to see if they want to have a look at it. But um, the dog was never disqualified, and um, he just did a clearance trial, and the dog has never looked back since. And he had some health problems as well? Yeah, before I got him, he was in the vets for a week. I actually, when I got to train the dog, I actually collected him from the vets. He'd been very poorly. Uh, at one stage, the vet didn't think he'd make it through but thank God he came out of it. And I'd like to say a real big thanks to Alan Ahern, who did a fantastic job on the dog when he was there. And um, it was a long road to try to get him back to good health, but uh, he's made a fantastic recovery. It makes his story so much better for you. Yeah, it's a fantastic story, a bit of a fairy tale. I could have imagined it, a dog that was lying in a vet's and on death's door, and a dog that's been hurdled, like what the derby dog has been hurdled. So. There's, there's been plenty of story about him and um, he, he's just an amazing dog. Incredibly, we have two unbeaten runners in the final and this fellow has a nomadic existence. Lyrene Mover, trained by Gabor Tensel, who races his greyhounds in Hungary, has already won the European derby and now aims to be the first ever EU winner of our derby. He has astonishing early pace as he showed to great effect in the semi-finals. There they go, racing up towards the first bend and Glenard Sunrise track. Well, here comes Lyrene Mover on his inside as they come into the first turn. It's Lyrene Mover, the Hungarian goes round in front. Glenard Sunrise off in chase, off these come three. The pressure is Westwood Scolari, off these come five. That's Slick Robert, they come round the third bend. And it's still Lyrene Mover with a two-length lead here over two Glenard Sunrise. 
Gabor Tensel and his translator Christina enjoyed the lavish lunch from the sponsors and so did Italian owner Max Piccinelli. Oh, for me it's a dream, I cannot imagine to be here and uh, for me is uh, as big as I can say you is, is my happiness. Ez egy, ez egy nagyon, erős, nagyon erős verseny, fantasztikus kutyákkal, akik ide kerültek a legerősebbjei a derbinek. Bármi történhet, ezt senki nem tudja megjósolni, mindenki csak bízni tud. Én is nagyon bízom a, bízom a kutyánkban, ugyanígy a szívében és a, és a, és a, a lelkében. We bought him as a good dog, and we knew he can be a top dog. But Gabor did with him a very good job and uh, br brought him to the next level and uh, he showed himself now. What a star Larry Mover has been in this year's derby. At times he hasn't trapped as quick as some, but hits full throttle soon after. As you go around that first bend, Larry Mover just pushes Bandicoot to Pokey to one side. So Larry Mover goes on here. Bandicoot to Pokey is in a good pinch though. Philo Skywalker and Seven Heads Bay fight out for third at the moment. So go down towards the third bend. Larry Mover again. The thorn in the side of Bandicoot to Pokey doesn't quite know which way to go. So come around the final bend. Larry Mover holding still. Bandicoot to Poker then can Philo Skywalker. It's Lyru Mover who wins the Hungarian hot pot. Wins here again. Igen, igen, fekszik neki ez a ez az agárpálya. Jól érzi magát rajta. Nagyon bízunk benne, hogy hogy eredményes lesz a fináléban. Now the last time I remember Hungary coming to England and beating us was in 1950 something when Ferenc Puskas scored. So maybe we can say that Lyru Mover is the Ferenc Puskas of the greyhound world. Én azt gondolom, Puskásnak is uh, hatalmas szíve volt, és uh, Lyrie Movernek is hatalmas szíve van. <laughs> Krug 95 represents Scottish Derby winning trainer Fraser Black and is another dog to have improved throughout the Derby. He won his first two rounds, claiming notable scalps in the process, including Fierce Afonic, and has delighted his high-profile owners. I'm joined now by the Krug boys, the owners behind Krug 95, Martin Wakeford and Lawrence Blunt. I'll start with you, Lawrence. Um, surprised to get to the final? I think we have to be a little bit surprised, yes. We always thought the dog was a very good greyhound, but he got injured, he was off for a long time, and we really didn't know what to expect after that. But Martin, he was named after a top class of bubbly, so you obviously expect a lot of a dog early on. Hopefully. With his back straight pace, hopefully we'll be there this year. Now, looking at his runs in, in an Ireland earlier in his career, he had a lot of early pace. He doesn't seem to be showing that at Wimbledon. He did get an injury. So he has had an injury and been off for a long time and he's shown a to total different type of running. So he has changed his running completely. And Lawrence, in the earlier rounds, he seems to be taking care of himself around the first bend, nipping on the inside. Maybe clever? I think he's a very clever dog. He doesn't charge up the back of dogs. He waits for a gap to open and please God one opens on Saturday. Do you think things might happen a little bit too quick for him though? I don't know. There's a lot of early pace in the race. You know, the, the favourite is a very short price, but he's got two very early pace dogs inside him and a little bit of bumping and boring, and who knows, we could be there coming off the last bend. Good luck, guys. We'll toast the viewers of the dogs, and let's hope you have all the best of luck. Cheers. Cheers. Krug down to five. Cheers. Thank you. Coming up, we visit the remaining finalist, Oran Classic, at his temporary abode in Essex. Welcome back to part two of the dogs. I've swapped the complete angler for Dean Towers in Essex, where Irish trainer John McGee has been based for his English Derby campaign. And of course, he has Oran Classic in the final. And we're going to ask this little fella and his trainer how he's going to get on. John has been based with Essex owner trainer Tony Dean for the duration of the Derby and has also brought over his lucky charm grandson Jamie. Their partnership almost pulled off a famous victory when Oran Classic lined up from trap two in last year's Irish Derby final. 
and away they go. And it's number four, Cash and Legend. Two on the inside gets a flyer. Orin Classic. Three fate point. Matt is going away. He's in second. And around the corner is number two out front. Orin Classic from three fate point. There goes four. Cash and Legend with a huge run down the back. And here comes the causeway. But out front, it's Orin Classic. The causeway moves into second. He's four lengths down. The third bend is two. Orin Classic. But the causeway is flying in second off the final bend. And here comes the causeway up to Shade College Causeway. Wins the derby. A magnificent performance. He came from nowhere. Well, John, he's been in five finals in Ireland. We shouldn't be surprised that he's lining up in the English derby final now. No, I think he was uh, the most unluckiest dog in the finals in Ireland. Like, you know, he done everything right in the final of the Irish derby, but College Causeway picked him up in the last few strides. He didn't see out the 550. He was unnatural in the laurels. Three crossed him out of the box. Waterford Masters goes on and on and on, second itis it was with him. Let's hope it's, it goes one better this year. Let's go back to Shelburne Park. He flew the lids, he led up, but he had a great champion in behind. If he does that on Saturday, is there a college causeway in the field to pick him up? Nothing will pick him up on Saturday if he goes around in front. Not the way he's been running, like he was come, he come off the back and just got beat the head done last Saturday. It's unbelievable the run he done. He's, he hasn't had a clear passage yet in any of the rounds. Can you work a little bit of McGee magic to get him out of the boxes on Saturday? I'll do the best we can with him. He, uh, I think the dog, the dog knows and he'll rise to the big occasion. He's used to it by now, he's been in enough finals. He's only had the red jacket once, that was in the first round, and he definitely did move middle. Yeah, well he moved middle out of two and he moved middle out of three last week. He, he came out and he collided into Fraser's dog, but uh, I don't think it's the dog that's moving out, it's the way the boxes are set. If you look, all six dogs come out. They've got to come out. They can't come up the rail because of the way the boxes are set. But that's no, no disrespect to anyone. Like it's uh, the only way they could set it and get the 480 metres. I'd say like uh, the way they say he's on the right side of them. The the other five there to hold him in. But he's not trapping, is he? He's not. Uh, it's a lot to do with the traps, I think, because like, he was uh, all his life at, uh, in, out of the other boxes, like them boxes at Shelburne and that, like, you know, 99% of his racing was at Shelburne. So I'd say, like, please God, he's got it all right on the night. Should be used to him by now. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think has been his best run at Wimbledon? The semi final. Like, to come from behind them dogs and like his tracking ability, inside, outside, the way he railed at the first. That's the first time he's railed the first bend was last week, so I say like the, the way the draw is now is brilliant for him. And it's still Larry Mover with a two-length lead here of the two Glenard Sunrise. Oh, these come three around classic. We can't believe our eyes. Larry Mover, the Hungarian hot pot, still there. Will he hold on? He's through. Second place to trap three around classic for John McGee. I wanted to bring him last year, but the GBGB wouldn't allow me. So I told a lot of people, like and the owners, I, I said, it's, in my eyes, he was a penalty kick for the Irish, for the English Derby last year. But he was a year younger. He's four and a half year old now. So I think he might. Uh, I'd love to see him going out with a bang. Do you fear Tumaline Jack? Well, if Tumaline Jack was to go round in front, like he'd be a hard dog to catch in the front. But we've got to see him doing it off the back yet come from as far behind as I have you know as I said earlier like there's a lot of dogs out in front uh, to look the business but they're, they're not so good off the back what about the rest of the field some pretty strong runners there eh? well I think Charlie's dog drawing three like he's it's a great box if he clears two like and if he leads like I think he might be a hard dog to pick up nice to go up against Charlie in particular you go back a yeah, long way you two go back a long 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 way to the old flapping days and that's before the we ventured into this game a long, long time. We've had our ups and downs and beat one another many, many times. Nice to get together at the Derby oh, lunch. Yeah. Brilliant. Like I've always had great praise for Charlie and Charlie has for me, so we've always got on well. And you get beat, he beats you, you take it on the chin, live to fight another day. Of course, McGee is no stranger to English Derby success. Indeed, he won one of the highest quality derbies ever when hit the lid one at Wimbledon in 1988. Owner Fred Smith proudly held the trophy then, and Oran Classics owners Des and Elliot White will be hoping to do the same come the weekend. I think there's 25 of them arriving on Saturday night. I don't know whether they come on helicopter or what, but 
but they're, they're lovely people I'm uh, hoping the Moonlight to get a chance to win a derby for them I won the Oaks for them and he's been unlucky in the derby and they're over the moon like it's only a matter of two months ago Elliot said call it a day with him retiring I said after the English derby and he was he said fire away you want to go away you go we've now seen all of Saturday's finalists here they are in trap order I've been at it a long time now and I don't let nerves get to me or anything else and I think the dog is cool, calm and collect and I'll do the best I can for the dog and I think the dog will deliver the goods for me. I think he has a good chance and I'm confident he can be best of himself because he is um, jumping out of his skin and full of health, good. Not far behind Tomb Line Jack on the clock, but quite a big discrepancy in the prices. Well, that's right, yeah, but I mean, uh, you know, he don't, he don't know what price he is, and um, I think he's a big price at uh, uh, five to one anyway. So viewers of a dog should be advised to get on, eh? Well, I mean, uh, he's, he's, I think he's good value for money anyway. A word of course for the trainer Fraser Black, he's been trying to win this derby a long time, he's had a lot of heartbreak uh, in the round of derby, it'd be great for him to win it this year. Certainly, yes, and he's the top man and he's made the dog, like who'd believe we'd be here now, with this dog, all the dogs we've had in the Greyhound derbies and everything all the way through, and here we are, he's really, he's done wonders with the dog. He'll have to do things right. He'll have to get luck on the night. But um, he's a dog that's, called, you know, he creates a lot of his own luck on uh, most of the occasions. So hopefully we'll get it on Saturday. The more I look at it, the more I'm thinking, you know, we have got a chance there, you know. I think the dog's there on merit, don't forget that, you know. he's, he, Yes, he's 20 spots behind the, the fastest ones, but, you know, it's a final and we can find that with this dog. And if we could find that and he gets a sweeps around the outside, who knows, you know. Now the calendar. On Friday, there's opens at Crayford, Milton Hall, Romford and Shawfield. Saturday night and it's tickets only for the William Hill Greyhound Derby meeting at Wimbledon. Opens also at Monmore. Sunday, there's opens at Hove, Doncaster and Sittingbourne. And Monday being a bank holiday, there's opens planned at Nottingham. For all the results, details of the bank holiday meetings, click onto our website, thedogs.co.uk. Join us on Sky Sports 4 from 8pm on Saturday night for the £75,000 William Hill Derby Final. It's sure to be a cracker. association with the Greyhound Board of Great Britain.